Good day, and welcome to the incredible world of Second Life. Second Life is a virtual world whose entire content is created by its users. Many educational facilities, private and public companies, and several other businesses have found Second Life to be of great use to them. It is also a world that people can do darn near anything that they've ever dreamed of. Today, this presentation is part of a college project from the American Military University, American Public University System. While the presentation itself may not be of the top design or structure, the creator had a fun time putting this together. This particular organism was picked because it is literally everywhere. It is a plant that has been seen by billions the world over, but few have ever taken the time to get to know it. This presentation will provide you with some things that you may not know about the plant, and I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I have. My name is Fopper Iwish. I will be your speaker today. I'm an avatar of a student from the American Military University, and I'm completing this as part of an assignment for the, my introduction to biology course. I did ask a friend of mine to join me today. This little kitty here is a longtime friend of mine. His name is Little Rare. You may have seen him in my previous video. Little Rare has been helping me with this presentation. Uh, he has been absolutely instrumental in acquiring the number of photographs that you will be seeing today. Many people are not fully aware of the other side of dandelions. While some people have always felt them to be a nuisance plant, others have found them to be beneficial in many ways. This is the scientific name of the common dandelion. However, out of great respect for the scientific community, I have no intention of even attempting to pronounce it. I will also save you, the listener, a chance to not have to erase the terrible pronunciation from your memory. Some people may not recognize the scientific name of the dandelion. Others may not even recognize the name dandelion. However, it is a unique plant that is known worldwide and by dozens of names, such as the dandelion, cankerwort, Milkwitch, Blowwall, Irish Daisy, Wild Endine, and so many more. The dandelion is found throughout the world, but primarily in the northern hemisphere. There are reports of it being found in such places as Africa, Australia, and even the Madagascar. Although not known necessarily as dandelion, they are this particular plant. They are not a new plant, however. While the actual evolution is sketchy, there are references to their use in medicine by Arabian physicians of the 10th and 11th centuries. There are also extensive references in the 13th century found in the Welsh society. Centuries later, they are still in use in so many different ways. Some of those ways I will introduce to you later. As I mentioned, my friend Little Rare has been quite helpful in tracking down the dandelion for us. It appears that Little Rare is taking his job pretty seriously. I would asked him to see if he could get a few pictures of the dandelions at the lawn and out and around our neighborhood. Well, I guess maybe I should have shown him a picture of one before I sent him out on his hunt. Dandelions, while are a quite hardy plant, actually are grown in the first inch of your soil. They can grow nearly any place that provides soil, water, and just enough sunlight. Hmm, I guess I should have let them know that they are not in trees or bushes normally, although they can grow under bushes and seem to appear to be a part of them under perfect conditions. Some can grow up to 18 inches tall. However, within a residential community, they usually don't grow that tall because of the attitude that dandelions are a nuisance plant. Okay, I did tell him that they are bright yellow with a slight hue of orange. Hmm. Well, they do dot the landscape in the spring and summer like tiny little bits of sunshine. What? They never find dead cats in trees, just saying. 
Hmm, apparently Little Rare had a little bit too much dandelion wine or something. Ah, uh, now I know why it took so long to get all the pictures put together. Someone needed a cat nap. Oh, finally, this is a dandelion. Notice the button top for its flower head, the small leaves supporting the head, and the long stem, which is actually hollow. Here is an example of the dandelion plant at various stages of its life cycle. What is important to realize is that up to 10 flowers can grow on just one plant. There have been reports as being as many as 20 flowers. There are several types of dandelions, but we will focus on the most common. The dandelion is asexual, which means that it does not have to pollinate. It is self-pollinating. However, it is the favorite of all kinds of insects, including bees. The basic structure of this perennial herb includes a taproot, which you see at the bottom. It serves to not only secure the plant to the ground, but it draws water and nutrients from the soil. It consumes so much of the soil's nutrients that it is considered to be a pest, for it takes from other plants' abilities for proper nutrition. The stems, as I mentioned before, are hollow. They are called scapes. The leaves have a very ragged edge, and it is from these that the dandelion has picked up the various nicknames related to lion's teeth. The scape and leaf both contain a milky sap, which is actually latex. The latex is harvested for use in manufacturing. When the flower is fully matured and ready to seed, it develops a round seed head, which you see at the very, very top in white. The flower head is composed of approximately 170 tiny florets. It is supported on the scape by two rows of smaller leaves called bracts. The lower bract remains turned down to help prevent insects such as ants from climbing up the scape and damaging the flower. The upper bract starts out in an upward fashion. It supports the flower head initially on the scape. When the flower is fully matured and ready to release its seeds, they will curve down to allow the wind to carry off the seeds. Okay, I know it says that it's a blow ball, but the blow ball is not little rare. It is the white fluffy flower that he is holding. A single dandelion flower develops 170-200 fruits or seeds. As mentioned before, each plant can produce up to 10 flowers. One dandelion plant in a normal season can produce over 15,000 seeds, according to the Michigan State University Extension Service. The blow ball is the seed head that develops once the dandelion is fully matured. The fruit of the plant is what is commonly referred to as seed, technically is called an asian. The florets die off and create the pappus, the pretty feather-looking parachute. The pappus is connected to seed or fruit by a stem called a beak. Seeds are distributed once the blowball releases the pappus and its passenger into the wind. The pappus, like a small parachute, carry the seed for great distances on the wind currents. Like several flowers, at night the dandelion closes up and goes to sleep. Once daylight hits, it opens back up in all its great and glorious yellow splendor. It is during the daylight that the plant soaks up the ray sun, allowing it to create the energy to grow, develop, and to multiply. So in review, the life cycle of a dandelion is pretty consistent. The wind carries the seed to a new location. When it finds the right conditions, the pappus breaks away from the seed, leaving it there. The seed germinates. The taproot begins to grow, sending up leaves that can be 5 to 10 inches long. Now comes the scape climbing from the root. The scape can grow up to 2 feet in the proper conditions. The scape is normally without leaves attached, unlike the fake dandelion, which does have small leaves on the stem. A bud forms at the top of the scape, and soon the pretty yellow button is seen. Within 8 to 10 days, you will see a bright yellow button begin to change as it dries out and develops the pappus. Within a few days, the tight cocoon of the pappus opens to this soft white ball. 
Soon the wind starts to picking up and eventually you will see little tiny parachutes flying off in the distance carrying the seeds to new locations. Then the process starts again. The dandelion, as I previously mentioned, is considered to be a nuisance weed by many people. Therefore, let's take a look at some of the biological controls that are possible. For smaller areas, there are many ways to try to control this plant. You can try to dig the plant out. Well-established taproots can sink quite deeply into the ground over the years, so plan on taking your time to make sure that you get the entire root system out. You may want to try to mulch the area you had problems with in the fall after the dandelions have dried out for the season. Doing this can help prevent the emergence of dandelion seedlings. Biological controls are quite vast depending on your situation. Birds, insects, and rodents can reduce the number of seeds by eating them. Sheep, rabbits, and geese love dandelions, as do slugs. There are other biological ways to help control dandelions if that is your desire. Chemicals should only really be used in extreme conditions, for they can damage the soil and can lead to issues with your other plants and possibly your pets and family too. Dandelions are quite a versatile plant. They are not just a pretty weed, as some people consider them to be, especially landscapers, homeowners, and golf courses. It can be used as a herb, health care, food, and even made into beverages. Some people use the dandelion to make medicine. They use it for several conditions, but according to the National Library of Medicine, there is not enough scientific evidence to determine whether or not it is effective for any of these conditions. It is reportedly used for anything from loss of appetite to gastro problems. It is also used as a diuretic as well as a laxative. It has been used to treat infections and even cancer. But again, there is not enough scientific data to support this. However, the nutrients in the dandelions have proven to contain almost as much iron as spinach and four times the amount of vitamin A. Dandelions consist of protein, fat, and carbohydrates as well. Its mineral and vitamin contents are calcium, phosphorus, iron, magnesium, sodium, and vitamins A and C. The dandelion plant is used in several foods as well. Whether it is deep fried, used to make breads or cookies, added to salads or soups, or made into honey. Not only is it edible, but with the right preparations it is drinkable as well. It is dried to make teas, the roots are dried out and roasted, and it makes a great alternative to coffee, while the flower heads are used to make dandelion wine. This plant is not just a weed, but kind of a fun flower with so many uses that people have not thought of. Not just blowing on the seed heads to watch the seeds take flight, or weaving the stems and flowers into headbands, but let your imagination soar. Special thanks to my friends and family in Second Life, and in my real life as well, for helping with this presentation. Happy eating, drinking, and digging them up. I hope you have a wonderful day.